and we are joined as always by ABC chief medical correspondent Dr. Jen Ashton and we are working on all of the major developments right now. So let's go to the latest coronavirus numbers from Johns Hopkins University. More than 48.1 million confirmed cases of coronavirus around the world with now more than 9.4 million cases here in this country and more than 233,000 American lives lost. And of course uh, this is all we've been talking about testing forever yeah. that we need to do better at it and different mm -hmm. options for testing rapid testing we have some new information now about the accuracy of yeah, rapid and testing. TJ and Amy as we do more testing we're going to learn more about how to use the results of that mm -hmm. testing so some new data this is a non peer reviewed at this point study out of the University of Arizona they compared symptomatic and asymptomatic people for PCR versus that rapid antigen test um, PCR to remind people that is the gold standard that's the one with the longer turnaround time the rapid test right now even though the federal government has shipped over a hundred million of them to various states right now they're only FDA authorized really for those with symptoms though a lot of public health officials advocating its use as a screening method rapid tests you guys can have up to or over a 50 percent false Whoa. negative rate so when this study compared PCR versus the rapid test they really found whether or not the person had symptoms to be a key determinant in how accurate they were I mean that's shocking 50 oh. percent yeah. false negative okay so obviously accuracy can be an issue with any test but right. that said what are some of the other factors here that are affecting our response well it's really important as we talk about testing this is not one size fits all it's whether that test is being used to diagnose someone who is having symptoms who's ill or whether it's done as a means of surveillance or screening. It depends, again, whether the person's asymptomatic or symptomatic. And then the key is how we aggregate and interpret that data. Yes, the federal government is sending over 100 million of these rapid tests. Yes, we are doing more than 1 million tests a day now, which is tremendous progress. But unless we have the ability to analyze that data in real time and then use it to help us respond, there, there's still a lot there that needs to be worked out. All right, Dr. Jen Ashton, as always, thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.